Howdy y'all, DJTJ here, back with another AOS on Tabletop Sim video. In today's video, we're going to talk about just basically getting a game up and running. Now, I went back and forth on this, of should we go to the workshop first and get all the stuff, or should we go to launch a game first? And... It makes it hard to go either way because you sort of need to know one and to do the other. So I decided on I'll just show you guys how to set up a game or how to join a game in this video. Alright, so once you get Tabletop Simulator up and running on your computer and you want to join a game, it's as easy as join. You click that button and there is a huge list of stuff. Now what I suggest doing is Typing in the search bar to see if something comes up and somebody is playing an Age of Sigmar game. Okay, so if a friend of yours or somebody you're going to play with it is hosting the game, you would ask them what is the name of it and type it in there. You could also use Hide Fool to get rid of people you don't know and click this for friends only. So if you only want to see the games that you're friends with, this will come up. But the easiest thing in general is just to type the name of the game of whoever's running it. Then you would select the game and it's going to ask you for a password. Um, the person hosting the game would have to give you that password and then you would type it in and click OK. Since I don't know these people, I don't know their password, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. So if you're just joining a game, it's pretty simple. Join, search for the game or type in the game name and click connect type in the password and you will be right in the game alright so let's say that you want to set up the game because you just want to play around with it and you would need to do this to get your army list straight to get the table straight things like that so that you want to create a game and be the host you go to this button here create so you click that one time and it's going to ask you single multi or hot seat and I've never really used hot seat I always use single or multi so if you use single player um, this is how I set up my boards, I get things straight, I go in and list build, things like that. So I could click single player and it's going to bring up this screen. So under my saved and downloads, I always keep a couple boards that are built and sort of ready to play. So I'm just going to click one of those right now and I'll click load. Now uh, I've said it before that sometimes loading in, since this is all crowdsourced, you're going. Sometimes pieces will not come in correctly. Maybe they're missing their textures, mix, missing their shade, something like that. Um, the, everything on this map loaded very nicely. There is a ton of extra stuff. The person who put this map together originally, they added in a ton of things. Now I will admit that most of them are outdated now, and I add in a couple of things myself that I find useful. Now it probably would serve me good to go in here and clean a lot of this stuff up and resave it, but this is sort of what you can get and what your table will look like in a single player game. Now keep this in mind, the multiplayer game, if you loaded this table in a multiplayer and the host did, it would look the same also. But there you go, this is a single player map if you wanted to try some tactics out, do some army building, just generally play sort of by yourself, this is what, that would be that process. So I'm going to exit out and go back to the main menu and I'll show you how to create a multiplayer match. So you go to create, multiplayer, put the server name in, name it something like AOS. And then, you know, North America or whatever it is you're going to name it. And that's really going to help someone find it. So if you're playing with a buddy, you can just tell him, hey, search up AOS and A, and then it should take him right to it. Server password. Don't use 123. And make sure that you put a password in. Um, I highly, highly, highly suggest putting a password on your server. That will keep unwanted people out. Um, if you do not, anyone could be able to join, especially if you keep it on public. And if someone comes in, they can they can totally wreck your game. There is a flip table button that just destroys the whole the game and it flips everything up. You can go back in time, have a save, and redo it. But you pretty much just don't want unwanted people in your game. 
especially when they have the ability to mess around if you by chance gave them some kind of permission. All right, so you can set the max players, like I was saying, 10. So if you were just you and your buddy were playing at 2 and you know that was always going to be there, you can turn that down. Click Create Server. And there you go. Now, once you click Create Server, it will populate under that join list that I showed you earlier. You won't be able to see that because... It's going to take me here to make the game. Now, once again, I've said that I have preloaded boards. I won't go through that again because it will look exactly like it would in single player, except now there's an ability for someone to join your game. In the next episode, I'm going to go over the workshop and how you actually get these gaming boards and get these pieces to play a game. Thanks for watching.